This is the first map of Africa, and it was drawn by a German cartographer named Monster Sebastian in the mid 1500s. He drew the map with the help of the information he gathered from his fellow German scholars, missionaries, and people from various countries. He updates the map from time to time with new information he receives before he died of the New World smallpox in 1552. The shape of the map is not so much close to that one we have today, but it's not only because they are still gathering information about the continent. He also drew the map of Europe, map of Americas, and Asia, which are also devoid of the shape we have today, but still close though. So maybe we can attribute that to the technology of his time. Many names on the map are written in ancient Latin, but not all. For example, this is a Latin word for kingdom. As you can see, the word is used many times on the map. Nubian kingdom, Melinde kingdom, Mali kingdom, and so on. Crown images are used to identify the kingdoms as well. These are the kingdoms known to the European explorers as at the time. Egypt and most of other northern parts of the map are also written in Latin, and this is because they've had a quite long relationship with them. And so, there is a Latin pronunciation and spelling for those parts. But in areas where there are new kingdoms or items, which has no spelling in Latin. Monster documented them as close as he could hear it from its pronunciation. And the effect of this is that some places on the map are difficult to translate today, even if you can translate Latin words. So I'm going to do some random interpretation of the contents of the map and explain why some weird stuffs appeared on them. To the right here, we can see the Kingdom of Salem. It's a historical port in Somalia today, and it is spelled Zela or Zela. It's traded with Asia, Europe, and Egyptian traders during most days. Day. This is the town east coast of Kenya, and it's now spelled Malindi. It is a port city. Through its port, Malindi's ruler once sent a personal envoy with a giraffe as a present to China on a fleet. Amarich cities. This area has a church icon on it, and the word translates to something like Amarich seats priest John. During this time, there was a myth that there is a king called John who ruled over a wealthy Christian kingdom in Africa. He also has some mythical creatures in his kingdom. Where we have South Africa today, Africa extremitas. Surely it means tip of Africa. And this invalidates the claim that Africa as a name for the continent came in the late 17th century because Monster wouldn't have called this part the tip of Africa if the old land he drew in the map is not already known as Africa at the time in 1500s. This is the Azania region. Azania is derived from ancient Greek word for dark-skinned and of great stature. The area was first inhabited by the Kushites before the Bantus migrated there around the 10th century AD. They traded goods such as oils, knives, glasses, iron, with the rest of the world before the age of discovery. Munster had a one-eyed creature drawn on in the area where we can see covers today Nigeria and Cameroon with the name Monoculi written on it. Creatures like this are mostly known as cyclops and they are giant in size. They are rumored to be inhabiting the area at the beginning of the Age of Discovery. The creatures are mythical creatures from Greek and Roman mythologies. In one popular Greek film called the Odyssey, there was a cyclops called Polyphemus, son of a god called Poseidon. 
So when talking about the European exploration of Sub-Saharan Africa, the rest of West Africa were the first to be explored by the Spanish and Portuguese as early as 1472. Therefore, those parts look a bit detailed. You can see many kingdoms and rivers there. Senegal Eiffel is a short form of Senegal Fluvius from Latin, which means Senegal River. The Senegal River ends in St. Louis around here and starts in Mali. Though on the map, it almost starts in Nigeria. Meanwhile, the river Niger, which cuts across Nigeria today and ends in the Atlantic Ocean, is here to be drawn to reach Nigeria, but remains stranded in Lake Libya in this area. Thanks to the efforts of Mongo Park and Landa brothers, who were able to trace different parts of the river and help put it on the map to reach the Atlantic. I will bring it to your notice that River Niger is being called so many different names by the natives of Africa at that time, and no one is able to tell whether they are a single flowing river. For example, it's called Isa Egrin, Joliba, Kwara, Kora, Mayo, Balio, Kora. Oh yeah, and so on. So then, we have the northern parts of Africa, which were not really new to the Europeans, but they of course joined together with the rest of the continent in this map. If you didn't skip the intro, we've talked about how the name Ethiopia means born skin. It is generally used for the dark skin populace in Africa. Libya here is not the same Libya as it is today. Libya is a name in the Greek used to refer to the entire region of North Africa except for Egypt and then in some cases as a name for the continent. In 1934, Italy in its colonial activities combined some tribes together and called them Libya, which is the Libya that exists as at the time of making this video. The title reads, This makes universal differentiation of all of Africa even more than Ptolemy's terms. Ptolemy in this reference is Claudius Ptolemaeus, who is a second century geographer, who had drawn this map of the old world, and this is a translation from Italian. In conclusion, I would say the cartographer tried a lot. But this map is based on the information and speculations he gathered from people who he was able to reach out to. By 1485, Joao Afonso, a Portuguese and his men, had reached Bini Kingdom in modern day Nigeria and he could have gotten better description of the area instead of the Monopoly. The rivers on the map, such as Niger, Senegal, and River Nile, even though they are not correct, his speculations on them are okay and they serve as hypotheses for other explorers to know where to start their investigations.